Our next guest recently introduced a resolution supporting investigating whether or not Russia's leader is guilty of war crimes. Joining us now is New Jersey Congressman who sits on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Chris Smith. Congressman Smith, great to see you. Sean, great to see you, you as, as well, Jen. Thanks for having um, me on. You know, of course, sir. Uh, we showed in that clip, Biden initially told the reporter no when asked if Putin was a war criminal. Pretty simple question. And then he comes back after an aide seemingly tells him what he had said. Um, it looks like he had to come back to clarify this. Uh, the White House then further clarified it later on. I, I, I just don't understand. You were out front very early, um, and I don't know why this has been so tough for the administration. We saw uh, U.N. Ambassador Linda Greenfield say a couple days ago, and then the vice president. I, I just, the Geneva Conventions are very clear what constitutes a war crime. And I feel like it's been this squishy problem for the administration to say the words. Sean, the no yes within a matter of just seconds uh, almost epitomizes part of the problem. And that is that there has been vacillation. I asked Wendy Sherman, uh, the number two at the U.S. Department of State under Blinken, I had a hearing just a couple of weeks ago. What is it that Zelensky asked for to deter Russia as they were building up along uh, the Ukrainian border with troop deployments uh, that he didn't get? I got crickets. I got no answer. And I still haven't gotten the answer. You know, had he had enough, he might have been able to deter uh, the aggression, you know, surface air missiles and all the rest. Uh, and, and it reminds me of when Portachenko, you know, came to Congress, and I'm right across the street from the Capitol, uh, and said, I can't win a war with blankets. And what did he get from Obama? More blankets. So, you know, you know money and material is flowing. But the idea of designating uh, Putin as a war criminal right now, indict him. Why not? The ICC is investigating. Good luck. We may find out in years, certainly months, uh, what the... You know evidence that they've uncovered. Uh, when 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 um, uh, Hitler went into Putin went into Poland, uh, you know with the Blitzkrieg, uh, that was a, an act of aggression of the, the worst kind. Um, you know, had there been a tribunal or the idea of a tribunal, it would have been good to right then and there brand him as a criminal. And maybe people around Putin well, might take a look. Congressman, let me and ask say, you about that. Let me, yeah. I want to dig into that more because I know that you introduced a resolution last week to indict him as a war criminal. You said that you hope to encourage some of his top aides and military leaders to think twice about following orders from him. But, you know, Putin's cracking down on disloyalty. He's called for the, in his words, the self-purification of traitors. I mean, are you still hopeful that someone within his regime will actually stand up to him? Uh, there's there's always the centers. There are always people who, I mean, we're seeing it at the other end with the conscripts uh, who are doing videos saying they had no idea. They thought they were going in as peacekeepers. And, you know, I've worked on the Rwandan, especially the Sierra Leone court, and also the, the former Yugoslavia court. And all of that was slow, 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 slow. Uh, I met with Milosevic, you know, the, the Serbian leader who invaded Croatia and Bosnia in Belgrade. Uh, he, he was a monster. And yet there was no potential sort of Damocles hanging over his head uh, that he would be indicted. He never thought it would happen. When he was indicted and then was awaiting trial, he died. Charles Taylor in Liberia, the president of Liberia, after so much death and destruction, uh, finally got a 50-year sentence. And I actually had the, the special prosecutor, David Crane, at my hearing uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, and he talked about all the different modalities that are available. The ICC is one. But they have a very, very poor record of convictions, very poor. Most of it is Africa-centric, uh, but maybe they'll work this time. Regional courts and the General Assembly, unlike the Security Council, which could be uh, a resolution be vetoed by China and Russia, the General Assembly could take a vote and convene a tribunal. Do it. If the United States won't do it, hopefully some other country will step up to the plate uh, and say, we're filing that there be a war crimes tribunal. And it would make all the difference in the world to do it as it's happening, rather than wait until all the carnage is over. And, you know, you could always add to the evidence. <laughs> you know, they're saying we want to have all the evidence. Even the State Department was pushing back on Biden uh, after he went from no to yes. Uh, and, and we're saying, well, you know, you got to investigate. The same thing happened when ISIS was was committing genocide against the Christians, and they were fleeing into Erbil. 
Uh, and it took Congress, it took uh, resolutions, it took a whole lot of work to finally get the John Curry State Department to say, yeah, it is a, it is a genocide. These are crimes against humanity. Uh, so I think we do it right You've now seen it. and brand him as a war criminal. Yes. Yeah, I, I know you've seen a lot of these humanitarian crises. Has there been a model in the past that has worked well? In other words, that we have resettled folks well? Oh, that's a great question. Um, yes and no. Out of Southeast Asia, the Vietnam, uh, the boat people, you know, millions of people who left as well as others who left otherwise, we had a very generous invitation for them to come here. Uh, that worked um, after the Vietnam War, after the fall of Saigon. Uh, but generally speaking, we also often find that, you know, it's all patchwork and, you know, trying to learn from yesterday's mistakes and getting it right. You know, the man you had on just a moment ago, I mean, some of these people who are just rising to the occasion uh, and countries like Poland under President Duda, who is a tremendously courageous president um, and a good man. I know him. He's just an amazing man. Um, to have him doing everything he's doing, including offering to give the MiG-29s uh, to uh, Zelensky to add to his, his defense capabilities uh, against the Russians. So um, there's a, you know, but, but this idea of a war crime, uh, crimes tribunal, there will be one probably, but it'll be so far down the line that it'll be all about accountability, not about chilling and holding people to account right. in real time. That's right. Congressman, oh. we thank you so much for taking time to be with us tonight. It's great to see you, sir. Jen, thank you very much. And Sean, so great to see you again. Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much.